You know, there's numerous Montreal Canadian alumni over the years that have drawn attention for their uh, love of the game, their friendliness, uh, their way with people of all ages, adults, you know, parents, kids. And one of them was a pleasure for me to interview him at the 2010 Montreal Canadian Alumni Game in Woodstock, New Brunswick, when Guy Lafleur and Stefan Richer and Yvonne Lambert and Sergio Mimeso and a few other stars uh, came in. And this guy will ring a bell for a lot of Montreal Canadiens fans. It will be an answer to a quick trivia question you were never asked. Uh, my good friend Bo Sheaves call him the great guy, and he's a great guy. The legend of Richard Sevigny will be the topic of this podcast. Now, uh, Joseph Francis Richard Sevigny, born April 11, 1957, in Montreal, stood five foot eight and weighed only 178 pounds. But his uh, hockey career has taken him many places, all across Quebec and the Q League, in the minors, all over in North America into uh, France as well as a uh, uh, part of their elite league and uh, in New Brunswick as well as a key member of the Nordiques affiliate the uh, Fredericton Express. Now we start looking at seven years career in 1975 when he started with the Grand Bay Vix of the Quebec Junior Hockey League. He later graduated to Sherbrooke Castell of the uh, Quebec Major Junior Hockey League where he played three seasons. He uh, advanced the squad to the Memorial Cup where he uh, went uh, uh, winless. But Montreal took a chance on 78 on a uh, 124th pick in the 1977 amateur draft. Now, 70's time in junior career including uh, a QMJHL West first all-star team selection when he played in 55 games. And in the queue, if he had a goal, his goals against average under four, you were a great player. He had a 3.85. His strong play uh, took the, brought the notice of Team Canada and he was selected to play in the 1976 World Junior Ice Hockey Championships where he won a silver medal for the national squad. Now, uh, it was here that uh, 78 allegedly was scouted, which led to him being drafted. Now, uh, that year, Montreal also selected seven other goalies uh, to really boost the competition to make the roster. Now, because the uh, Voyageurs were stacked with goalies, he started uh, his minor pro career in 1978 for the Kalamazoo Wings in the IHL. He played in 35 games uh, and recorded a 3.0 goals against average, and he was selected to the association's second All-Star team. He then spent the next season in the AHL, at first with the Springfield Indians, where he posted a 6-12-3 and record in 22 starts, and with the Voyageurs, he had 12 wins, 6 losses, and 1 ties in 22-20 games. So he won uh, 18 of 42 starts. Well, ironically, he had enough uh, time to play in the playoffs, but he got a call up to the big squad in game two for Montreal's final against the New York Rangers. As we all know, Michel Larocque substituted for Ken Dryden in game one, where the Rangers had uh, were running away, away with the contest. But in the warm-up of game two at home in Montreal, an errant shot by Dougie Roswell hit Michel Larocque. Dryden was forced to start in 78. Uh, had to be dressed as the backup and because uh, Sevigny dressed for the game under regulation 79 he had his name engraved on the Stanley Cup before even playing in an official NHL game either in regular season or playoffs so to my memory he's the last goalie uh, of uh, especially the Canadian teams that has happened. It might have happened in U.S. teams, but memory memory doesn't serve, especially in that he came too. Now, when Dryden retired in the offseason in 79, some spots opened up on the Canadians' roster. Uh, 70 attended training camp and played well enough to start 11 regular season games in the 79-80 season, including the, uh, the rematch of Team Russia against uh, the Canadians in New Year's Eve 1979, in which Montreal won. Now, the following season, uh, he played in 33 games, 
120 of them and a league best 24.40 goals against average. He won the Vezina Trophy along with former Pittsburgh Penguin Denny Aro, who uh, who had lost uh, the series uh, to Minnesota in 1980, and Michel Leroux, uh making the first uh, threesome. And what Claude Rell did that year, he wanted all three players to be uh, having 25 games. They'd be officially on the trophy, and that's what he did. Some games he'd play five minutes or the whole game, depending, uh, you know, to get the final uh, 25. Now, his claim to fame before uh, I get into the Gretzky incident, which I kind of bypass, I want to leave it by himself. Now, uh, he took part in the infamous brawl to end all brawls against Quebec in game six. He squared off against uh, future teammate uh, Clint Malarchuk and was given uh, a game misconduct. And ironically, 70 ended up with the Nordiques the next year and celebrated when Quebec on uh, Peter Stashy's goal bet Montreal in seven games. Now, he... <laughs> even though he had uh, back-to-back winning records with Montreal, he was not offered a contract by the Habs, and he released him. He was picked, again picked up in the Nordiques. He signed a four-year deal and spent the next three seasons with the Nordiques and was a big fan favorite with the Franklin Express before he finished his career in France in 1980. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the, this is the topper of the cake. In 1981, uh, it was decided he would start the playoffs against Edmonton Oilers and the, the Wayne Gretzky and the Messier team. He was quoted in the uh, Quebec media saying that 70 uh, was going to, I mean, Gil Fleur would put Gretzky in his back pocket but after game one, the only person who was put in the Gretzky's back pocket uh, was Richard Sevigny because he owned Sevigny in that uh, three-game series. The, uh, the one three straight and the defeated uh, himself. Uh, he defeated himself before he even started. But I talked to Sevigny about that. He said, oh, that's just hockey. You know, why would you start a game uh, thinking you're not going to win? And I agree. Even though Gretzky wasn't the Gretzky of later on Stanley Cups. He had enough to uh, defeat 70. 70's style was was basically similar to Don Edwards, but he didn't have his talent. He was a, a good backup, but uh, for him to stop, you know, stand in his head like, a, you know, Ron Tugnut or, uh, you know, or, or Eddie Belfour or Felix Botham wasn't going to happen. He uh, he was a good, good backup and a good, a good man, a good gentleman for hockey. Now, he's also uh, spent some time coaching. The semi pro of Verdana Dragons. Now, uh, regular season and playoffs, uh, f- total NHL total, 80 wins, 54 losses, uh, 20 uh, ties. There was no overtime uh, back then or overtime uh, ties. Best season, in my, my opinion, again, was that uh, 2.4, uh, 81 season in 33 games. He went 24 and 3 with 1,700 minutes played and two shutouts. But again, it stands out like a sore thumb. The 13 goals he gave up to Edmonton in the uh, the 81 playoffs, uh, and this was uh, you know uh, kind of not shocking, but you know it was the old uh, line being destroyed by the young line, and he walk away with the you know the bad paw. But anybody that plays five seasons with the Montreal Canadiens, uh, one. You know, as a backup in the playoffs. You know, three seasons with the Quebec Nordiques. And, you know, uh, his first season with the Nordiques, he put up some, some decent numbers. He had 10 wins uh, and six uh, losses and two ties in 20 games. So, again, the final uh, total in the uh, NHL, 80 wins, 54 losses, 20 ties, 3.21 average. AHL, uh, five in a record, played 100 games, uh, 42, 43, and 7. Uh, with a 3.42 uh, goals against Harvard. And uh, he only played uh, four games in the playoffs and three games, those three games, the infamous, law, infamous loss to uh, the Oilers. Now, uh, the World Championship totals, <coughs> four games, 23 goals against, 6.10, but uh, back then the World Juniors was high high scoring. But I've never seen the, uh, the full totals for his... Uh, Quebec Major uh, Junior Hockey League uh, games with the Castell, but uh, again, the average was around four, and for a goalie to have an average less than four in the Q League, 
And the, another trivia question, ladies and gentlemen, he was the last goalie before Patrick Waugh to wear number 33. And he had that very distinct uh, kind of uh, short mask, as we say, like Mike Lewitt. Uh, and it changed a little bit with decals. But Michel Larocque was a folk hero to a lot of people because he met the Russians in 1980. You know, he, he, he supported Guy Lafleur in 81. He was a true Montreal Canadian. You, you say uh, that a Montreal Canadian fan, he's got the red, white, and blue in their veins, and Richard Seventy is one of those. And if you ever have a chance to beat him, uh, he's a very genial guy, a very nice guy. Uh, kind of reminds you of the goalie from Slapshot, but without the profanity. And you know, uh, he's traveled from across Canada, across the world, and everybody he... Uh, He's uh, met, and he quotes in French for a couple of seasons, uh, too. And uh, and the senior league in Quebec, like he's been everywhere. And uh, you look at Bob Eubanks, not Bob Eubanks, but uh, Bob Euchre in the States, the announcer. I'd like to see Richard Sevigny do color commentary for NHL games. i really like to see that. I always spoke to him. And I was very impressed with his knowledge of hockey. I've been very impressed how the way he deals with people. When he was in Woodstock, he treated you like you were the person he needed to meet or wanted to meet. But the same dressing room, like I said, with uh, Steph Richie, Guy Lafleur, Mabesso, Lambert, all the other stars of Montreal, and a lot of the media was gravitating towards 78 because the first thing I asked him, like I said, you know, what, what were you thinking? Like, you know, what... Uh, when, you know, LaRock got injured. He said, what well, was he thinking? I was scared to death. You know, that's the, the, the question. He was never lacking a good quote. But I'd like to see someone attempt to do a book on him, not because he's the most important player of the last great era to Montreal Canadiens, you know, or the dynasty era. He just, he's a very interesting guy. Like he said, he's hes a, just a tremendous ambassador for the Montreal Canadiens, for hockey, for goaltending. Uh, I like to see him uh, give uh, goaltending instructions. Like I said, if you beat him, you'll know what I'm talking about. Like uh, Bo Sheaves and I were talking about that, my good friend from Natquick, who's been a big supporter of these podcasts. He had kind of encouraged me to kind of do stories on Montreal Canadiens of already been Nordiques. You know, that could be a book himself, uh, the Montreal Canadiens.